Welcome everyone to today's Deep Verse. These are deep conversations on AI with real world use cases, applications, expert insights, and thought provoking discussions. Today, we are gonna be discussing a topic that's critical to any organization that is using artificial intelligence. How does one prevent discriminatory outcomes that come out of AI analysis so that it helps you in decision making the right way? AI can bring immense value to businesses by automating the decisions, analyzing the data at scale, and improving the efficiencies within the business. But as powerful as it gets, it can also reinforce or even amplify existing biases if we are not careful. We've all heard the stories, AI systems discriminating in hiring, lending, or even healthcare. In today's video, we will actually talk about why AI systems can actually end up being or making biased decisions, and more importantly, how to avoid these pitfalls so that we ensure fairness and equality in the overall decision making. So let's dive in. So why does AI bias happen in the first place? To understand that, we need to break down how the AI systems are developed. AI decision making processes rely purely on data, a lots of data. So here's the thing. If the data you fed into the AI system is biased, then the decisions that it makes will be biased too. So let's look at some of the main reasons why AI systems can end up producing discriminatory outcomes. First of all, it could have had biased training data. The old saying in computer science is garbage in, garbage out. If the data used to train the AI model contains bias, whether it's a historical bias or a societal bias or a selection bias, the AI system is gonna learn those patterns and replicate them. For example, if an AI model is trained on a hiring data where certain groups were historically underrepresented, it might continue to favor those same groups in the future hiring decisions. The second one is the algorithmic bias. The bias can also creep into these algorithms themselves. AI systems are typically optimized to achieve a certain objective, like for example, maximizing accuracy or efficiency within the organization. But if the algorithm isn't designed to consider the fairness, it might produce results that are disproportionately harming certain groups of customers. Then we have the bias in data collection. Sometimes the bias occurs during the data collection process, where for example, if the data comes from a skewed sample, say a survey that only targets certain demographics, the AI model won't learn to generalize these concepts across the different groups. This can clearly result in AI systems that work well for some people, but not for the others. We also have the lack of diversity in AI development uh, teams. Finally, a bias can occur, for example, because of a lack of diversity within the teams that are building these AI systems. If everyone on the team comes from the same background or has similar experiences, they may not recognize the potential biases in the system that they're actually developing. Now that we actually kind of understand why the bias happens, let's also try to kind of unravel and explore uh, ways and means of how do we address it. The good news is that there are uh, always ways to prevent bias and discriminatory outcomes in AI systems. Here are some key strategies that, uh, that I would just put forward to you so that we will be able to build fairer and more equitable AI models. The first one is the diverse and representative training data. One of the most important things that you can do is pre to prevent bias is to ensure that your AI system is trained on diverse and representative data across all groups of customers. This means that you include data from different demographic groups across gender, across race, across the socioeconomic status, and more. If your training uh, data only reflects, say, one type of user, your AI model will only work well for that group. For example, if you're developing a facial recognition system, Make sure that your training data set includes people of different skin tones, ages, and genders. By representing the diversity in your data, your AI system will be better equipped to serve everyone equally. Otherwise, it's gonna be you know, working more effectively to one set of audience. Then we have the data auditing and pre-processing. Before you begin training your AI model, make sure that you conduct an audit of your data. This involves reviewing your data set so that you're able to identify any potential biases or imbalances. For instance, if you're working with historical data, you may find that certain groups are underrepresented or that some behaviors are kind of overemphasized in certain groups. Once you kind of identified these issues, you can apply a pre-processing technique to reduce the bias, you know, so that the what is fed into the AI system is much more unbiased. 
This may include oversampling underrepresented groups or removing certain features that could uh, identify or introduce the bias. For example, if a gender is irrelevant to your decision making process, you might choose to exclude it from the data set so that it doesn't kind of create a bias. So you prevent the AI from making bias predictions. Then we need to make sure that we uh, there is fairness in constraints in the algorithm design. So when building your AI models, it's crucial that you consider fairness as a key objective. Many AI systems are designed to optimize for accuracy, but that alone is not enough. You also need to incorporate fairness uh, constraints in order so that into the algorithm itself, because these are there are several methods to do it. For example, you can impose fairness metrics like demographic parity, which uh, ensures that different groups of uh, people are treated equally by the algorithm. Another approach is to build models that are explicitly optimized to avoid kind of disparate impact or ensuring that the system's decisions don't disproportionately harm one group over the another. So this is a very proactive approach, I would say, because it ensures that the fairness is baked into your AI models, not as an afterthought after you've finished developing it. And then we also make sure that uh, there is regular bias testing and auditing that happens on your uh, on your data sets. Bias isn't always easy to spot, you know, because it's it's important to regularly test and audit your AI models for discriminatory outcomes, because it could result in that. This means that running your models on different data sets and checking to see if they actually produce biased results. So let's take an example, uh, a hiring algorithm, where you could test whether a system favors one gender over another, and whether it tends to recommend the candidates from one uh, or certain racial groups more frequently. If you discover bias, then you will need to retrain the model with more balanced data, or you should also tweak, tweak your algorithm to correct for this disparity to, so that it doesn't occur. So regular audits ensure that your AI systems remain fair and accountable over time. We also need to be transparent and uh, the explainability of the algorithm is quite important. One of the biggest challenges with uh, the AI systems is, is the opacity, often referred to as the black box problem, uh, where an AI model uh, makes a decision and it can be difficult to understand why and how that decision was made. So it's very difficult to trace back. This lack of transparency can make it harder to identify and address a bias. So to prevent this discriminatory outcomes, it's important that we use these AI models that are explainable and that can trace back. This means that building systems where the decision-making process can be easily understood and clearly traced. If a system rejects a loan application, for example, the AI should be able to explain which factors influence that decision. By improving this transparency, you can actually catch the bias in real time and ensure the accountability in your AI systems. We also need to promote diversity in AI development teams. So the diversity is not just about the, the data, it's about the people who are actually working on the data. It's crucial that within your AI development team, there is a diverse team that brings a range of perspectives, experiences, and sensitivities that can help catch any potential bias during the development process. So when people from different backgrounds are able to come together, collaborate on the AI projects, they're more likely to recognize and address these bias, uh, the biases that uh, others might actually overlook. So diverse teams are also more likely to build AI systems that are inclusive and fair for all the users across the globe. So in addition to these, uh, the technical strategies that we can follow or we've covered, there is another critical component uh, to, uh, to make sure that we prevent bias in AI, which is ethical AI practices. These are the principles and guidelines that uh, make sure that your AI systems are not only effective, but they're also fair they're accountable and they, they should be trustworthy. So how do we do that? So first of all, we need to establish ethical guidelines. Before we start developing any AI system, we need to clearly draw the ethical guidelines for the team. These guidelines should outline the organization's commitment to being fair, to being transparent, and to being accountable in the decision-making process so that there is absolutely no discrimination and there is absolute fairness. They should also be defining what constitutes an acceptable use of AI and what steps will be taken to prevent any harm that could happen to the users. By having these ethical principles in place, you create a foundation for responsible AI development and ensure that the fairness is always on top of mind. We also need to create AI ethics committee. Another way, this is another way to promote uh, ethical AI practices where we create an AI ethics committee. So what does this committee do and who, and who are these people? And this is a group of diverse stakeholders, including data scientists, legal experts, ethicists, 
and representative from the affected communities who kind of oversee the development and the deployment of these AI systems. This, the committee's role is make sure that they review the AI projects, identify potential risks, and ensure that the systems align with your organization's ethical guidelines. By, uh, by involving a group of broader range of perspectives that come from these committees, they can actually help you catch a potential bias before they become embedded into the system. We also need to foster a culture of accountability. This means that we foster an environment where people feel empowered to speak up if they notice any potential bias or any ethical concerns that could happen in the AI projects. We have to encourage an open dialogue and make it easier so that the fairness is priority in all the AI initiatives. So finally, before we close, preventing discriminatory outcomes in AI decision making is both a technical challenge and an ethical responsibility. So by using diverse and representative data, by incorporating fairness into the algorithms that we develop, and by testing for the bias regularly and fostering a culture of transparency and accountability, we together can build AI systems that serve everyone fairly. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Deepverse for more insights on AI, ethics, and innovation. Until the next time, stay responsible, stay fair, and keep pushing the boundaries. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.